Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm happy uh, to be able to speak even though it's virtual this time and I hope I will be able to speak till the end of the talk because the electricity got out here and I'm not sure how long the data will stay. So that's why I disabled uh, the uh, uh, video. Uh, so I would like to speak about the new uh, IPA Modref pass, which is something which we started with my student David Cepelik as a part of his uh, master thesis. And then uh, I continued working on it, also partly uh, as founded by uh, AMD. Uh, so uh, I would like to start with a short uh, review of what kind of inter-procedural optimizations we have in GCC. Uh, so uh, the list is uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty long these days, but they are basically relatively easy optimizations. So the symbol visibility is the optimization which is uh, mostly active with LTO where we get the feedback from the linker in, from, in form of this uh, uh, plugin, uh, plugin information, how the symbols are bound. And that means that uh, we can bring some uh, symbols which are externally visible internal and that allows more optimization. Uh, then you have the unreachable function and variable removal, which is the easy pass over the symbol table and you take away everything which is not needed. And we have a profile propagation, which is trying to identify the cold pieces of the program and hot pieces of the program. Uh, then uh, Martin Yelishka implemented ICF, which is an identical cold folding pass. And that is uh, merging, uh, merging uh, uh, functions which uh, look identical in the uh, GIMP level. Uh, we have the virtualization pass, which is something I was working uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we have the constant propagation, uh, which is uh, also doing a cloning, uh, which means that we specialize functions for a given constant parameters. And uh, uh, we have uh, construction destruction merging, which is something uh, that uh, was motivated by Firefox. Uh, because the modern C++ program has really thousands of constructors, which uh, then uh, touch a lot of uh, pieces of the code segment. And we have inlining, uh, which is the uh, most active pass. We have some attribute discovery like pure cons, not row, non-free, no return, and malloc. And uh, we do a survey which is called IPA reference, which is essentially a simple pass which collects lists of the static variables which are read and written by a function and it's limited to the variables which are not having address taken because otherwise the analysis is complicated. And we have a short pass which is uh, merging contact groups uh, in case it's possible. And uh, finally, we have uh, experimental points to analysis, which uh, uh, I believe there was a talk on it two days ago, which I unfortunately missed, but I hope uh, to learn uh, what uh, was told there. Uh, you know, I'm speaking from my uh, vacation, so that's uh, like, uh, vacation, other conference, to be honest. Okay, so this is uh, this is the list of the optimizations. And if you uh, ask, you know, which of these optimizations are really important for the performance, uh, then the answer is that is basically the inlining. You know, most of the other optimizations uh, are relatively, for example, spec neutral, uh, which is uh, sort of expected, but. Uh, uh, there are some exceptions, like uh, the constant propagation is now very useful for uh, some specific benchmarks. Uh, and also, if you look on the code size, then uh, there the are other very effective optimizations, which is ICF, the electrical code folding, and uh, the unreachable removal. So this situation is slightly uh, disappointing from the point of view of LTO, because uh, it means that we spent a lot of time making the LTO framework very general. Uh, but in, in the end, you know, we really have a glorified uh, intermodule in line ref. Uh, so uh, one of the motivations to work on the mode ref pass was to try to add another pass which would uh, be effective and which would uh, uh, catch uh, some extra optimization opportunities on the normal code. Uh, because uh, the main issue is that uh, since the compiler is so dependent on the inlining, uh, tuning the inlining heuristics becomes a hell. So it's something which I do every now and then that I'm trying to improve uh, the inlining heuristics. And it is really very hard to balance the code size and uh, the performance uh, because uh, yeah, as soon as you miss some important inline, uh, the intra-procedural optimization simply gives up. Uh, so uh, what the mode ref is doing, you know, as the name is suggesting, it is a pass. Uh, which is looking uh, for memory locations which are modified 
and reference by the function. And the basic idea is that this information can improve uh, the quality of alias analysis, in particular it can tell if uh, the given function call cares about the given memory location, and that in the end uh, should uh, enable other optimizations. Uh, so, uh, how the pass is organized? Uh, there is basically a pass which is run three times. And at the compile time, which at least with the LTO optimization, this is the compile time, uh, we do something which I call the local mode ref, which is done as the top down propagation of the mode ref information uh, during the early optimization passes. And this is quite important because uh, during the early optimization, we do very limited inlining. Uh, so the functions we see are having a lot of external calls and uh, this allows us relatively cheaply uh, to do a little bit more optimization around those calls. Uh, the second step which is done is that we get uh, into the IPA mode and the IPA mode ref is uh, doing the analysis part which means it's collecting the, the loads and stores in the function and then it is streaming them into the object file into a simple summary. I will show how these summaries looks like. And uh, the second step is that uh, at the VPA stage, which is the only stage which sees the full uh, program, uh, we stream the summaries in and we do the entire procedure optimization, uh, which is actually kind of a simple data flow which runs over the strongly connected components of the call graph. And then we stream out uh, the final result about behavior of the functions. And then at the link time, uh, we basically repeat uh, the same thing as the compile time. Uh, we are propagating the information down in the call graph, but at the same time, we stream in, stream in the global information from, uh, from the VPA stage. Uh, this is done because, uh, you know, after inlining, uh, the functions become significantly simpler, you know, and redoing the analysis is increasing the chance uh, that uh, we, will, uh, we will get uh, some extra optimizations done. So this is the uh, basic outline of the of the mode ref, and it is pretty standard. You know, all the other uh, IPA passes are organized this way, and also the mode ref is relatively cheap pass. You know, it is really not. Uh, you know, it, it accounts something like uh, one percent of the VPA time, and it accounts uh, zero point zero something percent of the of the LTRANS and the compile time. So uh, the basic uh, basic test case uh, where you can see what's going on is the following. You know, here I have a function foo, uh, which is a function which is reading and writing global memory, and I'm forcing it to not be inlined because uh, you know otherwise uh, things will get optimized easily. And then I'm having a function test, uh, which is writing the global memory and then returning it. But in meantime, you know, it's calling the foo, and uh, you know all the uh, you know, until the GCC uh, 11, uh, we was basically not able to optimize uh, optimize this code and conclude that the function returns one uh, because we simply assume that the foo can do anything because it's not constant, it's not poor. So uh, the code look, looks like this, you know, there's this foo which is not interesting, but in the test, uh, there is this read from the memory which is uh, computing uh, the uh, return value. So uh, what happens with mode ref is that uh, this read, which I put there the arrow because I was not sure if I will be able to show something on the slides and I'm still not sure ah, yeah, I can show. That's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, you now this, uh, this is the optimizations which happens with mode ref, uh, which is now enabled by default in GCC 11. And basically what happens internally is that the mode ref is computing uh, the following summary. So if you look on the mode ref dump, uh, the pass goes through every statement of the function foo and uh, it finds that there's a load of uh, q and load of p and then uh, there is uh, the store on the pointer address a load from the pointer address and for each of them it is recording uh, the base alias set and then the reference alias set which are the two alias sets which we associate with every memory access you know here they are the same but if i made the example to contain a structure and access the field and then the base alias set would be uh, the type of the structure and the reference alias set would be the, the type of the field. And uh, we made the summary which looks like a tree and the tree is organized within the three levels. 
So on the top level, uh, we have the list of uh, base alias sets which are accessed. So here it is alias set one, which is probably the alias set of the pointer, and alias set two, which is the alias set of uh, of the, the short. And uh, we have the list of the stores, so it is storing only only short. So don't don't uh, worry too much about the every access. But this is how the how the tree looks like, and it's it's easy to use it uh, during uh, the local optimization. You know, if you see the call to foo, and you want to test if the given value is uh, modified or it is used by by uh, this uh, function, all you need to do is to go through this tree and see if there is a uh, there is a conflicting aliases access, which doesn't happen here because the a is having type integer, but uh, the pointers are pointing to short. So for this simple reason, you know, the propagation uh, propagation happens. So that was actually the original idea, which uh, I started to discuss with uh, David Cepeli for, uh, for the MoDraft. And that's uh, what uh, we eventually implemented on the beginning of the project. Uh, but it turned out that uh, you can do uh, more. Uh, with relatively little extra effort, you know, once the infrastructure is on the place, you know, you can uh, save the summaries, load the summaries, and analyze the function. You know, you can pretty easily uh, do more. So here is an example where the MoDraft is able to track uh, that the accesses are actually happening through the function parameters, which is of course the common case. You know, if you have uh, C++ member functions, uh, then uh, you always have. Uh, always have access uh, through the this pointer. So it is good uh, to remember that certain memory accesses happens uh, through uh, through the values which are passed to the functions by parameter. So here is as again an example, you know, I'm uh, hoping uh, that the return value will be optimized because it is not accessed uh, by or modified by the function foo. But at this time, you know, the alias sets will be in conflict because uh, all of them will be of type short, uh, but uh, the array indexes are different. Uh, so for that, a little bit extra uh, the, uh, information needs to be uh, tracked. And uh, it, looks, uh, it looks as follows. So again, you know, with MoDraft, uh, this is optimized to return one. And uh, how the summary looks like is uh, visible here. And basically, uh, the main difference is that now this access, which uh, previously was every access, is recording the information that the base pointer is parameter zero. And there is an offset from the parameter, which is four in, in uh, uh, bytes. Uh, there is a bit offset, and there is the size of the access, which is in bits, and the maximum size of the access. This is how internally uh, the alias uh, Oracle represents the access ranges. So this is the same representation as in an uh, three SSA alias. Uh, and to now we know if uh, the uh, local optimizations go through the function test. You know they are tracking the value which is accessed by pointer on the in the p on the index two, and it can easily see that uh, the store which happens in foo is not conflicting because it is storing uh, to. Uh, to the different access range. So again, you know, this is mostly meant to uh, help uh, the C++ member functions, uh, because if you pass the object as a pointer, then it is very easily to track uh, these access ranges, and it is uh, making it easier to optimize around them. Because previously, uh, basically, uh, the main problem was uh, that if you got uh, some member function which was not inlined, uh, the compiler got the lost track about what's going on with the values uh, of, on the object. So, the, you know, the code works only well only when everything gets inlined, and that's pushing the inlining limits up. So that's the second feature which, uh, uh, which the MoDraft is having. And after that, uh, you know, and after the end of uh, David's project, uh, I added uh, another, another uh, uh, analyzer, which is tracking something which is called the parameter flex. And the parameter flex is pre-existing infrastructure, which uh, was used uh, to represent, uh, for example, Fortran functions. We have something which is called attribute fn spec. And the attribute fn spec is uh, uh, having flex, and these flex are used by points to analysis. 
So in this case, uh, this is another example, which is optimized with MODREF and not optimized before. Uh, and actually, this is the only example which I noticed that the Clank is also optimizing. And basically, the idea is that here, uh, the, again, you know, before MODREF, we was not able to optimize the return value. After MODREF, we get the optimization done. And the basic idea is that uh, there is a call to the foo, which is passing the address of P. And there is a call to the function, which is completely external to the unit. So GCC doesn't know what's going on. Uh, but if you know, this EAF no escape is detected, uh, GCC knows that uh, passing P to the foo is not going to make the, uh, the address of P to escape uh, to, to some global memory. So that means that the GCC is able to track uh, that after uh, the call of the bar, uh, the value is safe because it is an automatic variable and the address didn't escape uh, to any, any global memory. So that's, uh, that's the basic idea. Uh, we still have sort of missed optimization here because if I remove this P equals to two, uh, then it would be still nice to optimize the return value to one because that's what uh, the function foo does. But this is not what happens with uh, MODREF. This is more job for uh, you know, IP constant propagation. And unfortunately, the constant propagation doesn't have any return functions. Uh, and this is a special case of the aggregate return function. So this is something which uh, might be nice to have in future, uh, but uh, it's not uh, implemented yet. And here it works in the way that uh, there is a simple data flow analyzer, which is trying to figure out what happens with every parameter. So here, uh, you know, we analyze the parameter P and we infer the flux, which is direct no escape and no direct escape. And I will explain the other two flex in, in next slide. So this was about uh, no escape. And the other, uh, other flag, uh, which, which I added the definition, so that means that uh, the uh, memory which is pointed to by the parameter doesn't escape to the global memory or other parameters, it can be still returned. It's a pretty, uh, pretty funny definition, but that's uh, what Richard told me it should be. And uh, the other, uh, other flag, which uh, I have added after looking into some test cases, is no direct escape. Uh, which means that uh, you pass uh, uh, pass uh, the pointer uh, to function, and the pointer itself is not escaping. So here, you know, the uh, the value of Q is uh, still uh, uh, still safe, uh, but the value which is pointed to by Q is escaping into this global variable, which is again something that happens pretty commonly in C++ because if you think of this as being some simple class then very commonly the class contains some pointer and this pointer is stored somewhere into link list or something else. Uh, but here, you know, the important information which GCC is able to keep is that the queue is itself is not escaping, only the value pointed by queue. And that means that this calling to the external function bar is not going to change the values. So, you know, this is just a uh, some uh, stupid example around to, to make the transformation happen. And again, you know, this time I didn't uh, do both versions, but again, we optimize this to the, uh, to the uh, return value. And I think I got the slide wrong because this is the example from the previous slide, but then you have to believe me that it works. Sorry for that. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this is the direct escape. And in this case, uh, no, that's the only flag which we can determine because uh, the escape and uh, direct is not true here. And finally, there is this direct flag, uh, which means that uh, the value is used, uh, but it's never, never used indirectly. That means that we never use the uh, memory, which is pointed to by uh, some pointer saved on the location, uh, which the pointer itself uh, points to. So in this case, you know, the pointer is used, but it's only tested uh, in the SCAR computation. And that means that we can uh, detect that the flag is direct. And as the consequence, uh, we can figure out that storing this one, two, three, four into the uh, memory P is not necessary because uh, the program cannot access it. So again, you know, if you look how this is optimized, uh, there is still this one, two, three, four, 
one, two, uh, three, four, because uh, it is being returned it, but it is never stored into memory location. So that's the uh, that's the uh, meaning of the uh, direct flag. So uh, that's uh, all the uh, main features. Ah, yeah, finally, there is a no clock, I forgot about it. Uh, so that means that the parameter is read only for uh, for uh, the points to analysis. So it means that the points to set, which was uh, there before, uh, the function call remains the valid after the function call. And here I have constructed a simple example where I have a P with the interesting point to set, you know, either A or B. And then I'm modifying some C, which is definitely not pointed to by P. But in the meantime, there is this foo which is doing something funny, uh, something funny with P. And uh, we need to propagate that uh, this is not uh, going to uh, you know, affect the value, value of this call. So that's, uh, that's the final flag. So this is what uh, um, Modref did in GCC 11. Uh, for, for the trunk, I have added uh, uh, three extra analysis. You know, we start to track something which is called EIF not return it, which means that uh, the value is not escaping to the return value. And we also have EF not read, which is kind of opposite of the of the knock lower. And finally, we have unused. So the last two things, uh, they are not really that much useful in the real code. Uh, so I didn't bother to construct a test case. Uh, this not return date uh, is uh, doing better because we know that uh, so the values that cannot get into the return value. And that still adds something like uh, another another uh, 12 or 15 percent of extra transformations on the top of the previous MoDraf changes. So this is uh, uh, this is what the MoDraf is doing. Uh, the uh, propagation is actually quite straightforward. Uh, the MoDraf is split between the local data flow, which happens uh, at the analysis time, and the global data flow, which happens at the VPA time. And the local data flow is simply having uh, having a lattice, uh, which is collecting something which I call the escape point, uh, which is uh, information that uh, the flags from the function call are actually inferred uh, to the flags uh, from uh, uh, from the parameter of the given uh, function. Okay, so that's uh, that's it, and I would like to uh, say something about uh, about the benchmarks. Uh, so this is showing uh, this is showing uh, the number of these ambiguations and uh, the number of uh, queries uh, with uh, GCC does when it is building CC one plus with LTO, and this is only the uh, the link time optimization. It doesn't account uh, the compile stage because it's slightly harder to collect the statistics. And the first is with the mode ref enabled. You know, then it is with mode ref disabled. And this is uh, disabling MoDraf, and it's also disabling the strict analysis, you know, uh, the strict, uh, strict aliasing. And finally, there is a disabling MoDraf, a strict uh, aliasing, and uh, PTA. And uh, you can see that these numbers look actually quite uh, surprisingly good, uh, because uh, the MoDraf is uh, increasing the number of disabligations by 21%. And it somehow seems that it is uh, doing more than uh, than the strict aliasing or a PTA, uh, which uh, sounds somehow surprising given the complexity of uh, of the strict uh, aliasing and the PTA implementation. But of course, you know the MoDraf would not uh, work without strict aliasing and PTA, so it is just pit piggybacking on the existing uh, infrastructure. But it seems that it is really making quite a lot of difference. Uh, the complicated question is, you know, how this difference is translating into the real performance? Uh, because as you can see, you know, the compiler is also doing uh, significantly more queries. I tried to color code it, so the green values are the good ones. That means that uh, the optimization happened or the subjugation happened. The red values are the ones which are uh, which are bad uh, because uh, the transformation, uh, uh, the subjugation didn't happen. And you can see that uh, for some reason uh, the compiler is uh, trying to uh, trying to do significantly more queries, uh, which for some another reason is the uh, being about the call statements. Uh, but in all in all, you know the number of these applications goes up. Uh, I will show you how this looks uh, with the different oracles. 
So the previous slide was showing that the sum visualizations by type of the queries. Uh, so maybe I should say it, you know, the first uh, bar is uh, the queries about two different memory accesses. The second one is about the memory access and a call. And the question is if the call is using the memory access. And the third one is about the call and memory location. And the question is if the call is clobbering the memory access. So I was hoping that the MoDraft will actually have this call use and call clobber, which it does. Uh, but uh, quite surprisingly, it is most effective about uh, the memory memory accesses, which doesn't directly involve calls, but uh, they depend on some uh, global information being propagated. Okay, so uh, this is uh, how it looks with different uh, uh, Oracle implementations. So we do the type-based alias analysis, which is TBAA. We do the points to analysis, which is points PTA. At the split into two types of questions. Either we want the intersection of the sets or we want the subset relation. And then the rest is the rest of the oracles, which is basically the base pass offset analysis and uh, the access pass analysis. And as you can see, uh, the MoDraft makes uh, the TBAA go up, which is uh, because of the analysis I have shown in the first slide. It is something like 11% on CC1+. Plus. But the quite surprising thing is that the PTA goes up uh, by 13 times on GCC. And uh, I was uh, quite surprised by this value, so I looked on other tests and collected statistics, and it really tends to help a lot to PTA. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, the PTA is very sensitive on uh, value escaping completely, if the value escapes, uh, the PTA is up. So, you know, any help which prevents the value from being escaping uh, helps significantly to the quality of the analysis. So I will get to the last slide because I think I'm running out of time. And this is uh, how the performance looks like. So the MoDraft is doing something like a, a half percent, two percent on the second uh, 2017 with O2 because my primary goal was to uh, was to get the O2 better, you know, it also helps with O3, you know, actually slightly more, but I didn't put it on the slide. And this is how it compares to the other uh, two uh, other two tricks, which we do, you know, the strict aliasing counts uh, somewhere between 1% and 1.5%, and the PTA counts somewhere between uh, 0 and 2%. And it uh, counts significantly more with O3 because uh, it enables more vectorization. And you know, if any vectorization gets enabled, you know, it uh, it it actually gets up to something like uh, ten percent on the on the spec FP average. And this is uh, all the things together. So this is comparing the base, which is disabling MoDraft, strict aliasing, and PTA over a, over a, uh, the compilation that enables everything. So all in all, you know, this is uh, not. Uh, a uh, very big uh, improvement, but it is actually not too bad. I wanted to show a little bit more, but because I cannot share the screen, I will not, but you can ask me later. And uh, I will only uh, show the slide uh, when I collected some benchmarks. Uh, so essentially, uh, this transformation or optimization is a hit or miss, you know. Uh, it does nothing interesting until it is ambiguate something which enables vectorization or something else important. And there are a couple of benchmarks when it happens, you know, most importantly on Unbench and Polyhedron. There are also some regressions which uh, we need to analyze. Uh, you know, you cannot blame the uh, better analysis to, to cause it, but it needs to be fixed. And that's all I wanted to say. And I'm happy that uh, actually I was not disconnected and hope next time it will be in person. And also hope you hear me. Yeah, thank you, Jan. <laughs> thank you. So we have time for questions. We have like one minute, two minutes. Okay. Yeah, there's a question on the chat. You know, if this is uh, uh, useful for, uh, uh, if there are any plans to do with uh, uh, without LTO. Uh, well, this pass also works without LTO. I didn't put the numbers on the slides because uh, I wanted to actually show a bit from my browser. Uh, yeah, it helps less without LTO, of course, because there is less of the context, but it is useful. And uh, with the code size, uh, it is a slight, a slight increase in the code size on the average, uh, which again is mostly about tuning the other optimizations. <laughs>